Hi everyone. Um, I will, for some reason, Facebook has decided on my um, phone here that I can't record sideways. <laughs> it just likes to play with me. So um, I'm just gonna try and figure out how I'm going to do this. So you'll just have to bear with me while I rearrange some things. Um, let's go move it that way maybe. Yep. Okay. All right. Say hi if you're watching so I know who's on. And um, oh, I'm hoping I'll be able to just set this phone up the right way. Um, I can switch there. That's all good. Um, I'm going to just check out over here in, um, I don't know why Facebook does this to me. Oh, you don't think you can do it the other way. I, I spun it the other way earlier, Sue, but, and it worked, but um, it's, I had it portrait when I started and it just said I had to rotate my phone back the other way. So I have no idea what is going on, but it's just Facebook. You all know that I can't, um, it doesn't like me. <laughs> um, all right, I'm also streaming this in both of the Facebook groups, the uh, membership and also um, the um, free Facebook group. I don't know, I'm just setting up my computer so I can see comments because when I spin this around to start drawing, I won't be able to see anything. So, um, hi everyone, Kelly, Glennis, Magella, Donna, Chloe, Mandy, Maria, Rachel, Di, Deb, Sue, Marianne, Kay. Everyone's coming in hot, so... <laughs> um, all right, my phone's just giving me notifications. Um, yeah, so tonight is just a relaxed sort of draw-along session. Um, like I was saying earlier today, normally um, I do these on Zoom so I can talk to everyone. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Di and Julie. Um, but, yeah, I, um, I figured it would be too confusing for me. So a Facebook Live might be the best. Um, what is it? You need to get a camera called Mevo. We'll follow your drawing and do landscape works. Great for live. Thanks for that info, Sue. I will write that down. A camera called Mevo. Mevo camera. All right. Yes, Kelly, it's wet and um, it's not that cold here, but it's definitely wet. I actually am flooded in now. So, but for those that are doing my art class tomorrow morning, if you're hearing this, um, don't worry, I will be there. The Fingers crossed, the water should have gone down. It stopped raining like ages ago, but we get a lot of runoff from further west. So, um, yeah, so I should be right to go. Um, oh, we've got Estelle's from South Africa. I know we've got some guys from the UK here, lots of Aussies, of course. Oh, thanks, So Yeah, definitely send me some info on that. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, I should be able to get out tomorrow. It should be fine. So, yeah, definitely put in um, where you're from as well so everyone knows. There's a lot of um, my members on here that are already in the Creative Barn membership. So um, they a few of them sort of know each other. So, but, yeah, definitely have a good little chat. They're all, if you've got questions as I'm going, I'll kind of stop and try and have a look. Um, if I did miss any, um, I'll just answer them later on. I'll go back through the chat because I might miss some. So we've got some New South Wales. Why is that slowed down? Hold on. Just let me... Um, I've chat okay they're coming in a lot quicker on my phone than they are on the computer oh, Susan hi you're looking forward to some fun awesome well I have a wine <laughs> so um 
Yeah, not that I ever am going to be able to drink this. Um, Dyes in Albany Creek, Julie's in the UK, sorry. Um, yeah, every time I always have a wine in the membership, we call it a drink and draw, but we never get to drink anything because we're too busy um, drawing. Hi, Dev. Um, yeah, Kelly, Di, Di's actually um, from America. She's actually, believe it or not, my old school friend um, from we met, I think, in grade two or three. And she lives in America now, but she's here on holidays and wanted to um, get on. So it's funny. I've got three girlfriends from about grade two, and we've just remained friends forever. It's, it's amazing. We caught up the other week, so it was great. It's funny how your old friends like that, you sort of don't see each other for years, but you're still, you know, it's like yesterday. Another UK, Leslie's in Northumberland. And Chloe, of course, is in the UK. All right, um, so let me think. I'm going to spin this around. Um, I think people are in. Um, also let me know who's actually going to draw along tonight as well. Oh, hold on. I've just got Evelyn in the draw-along session um, in the chat. Hold on, I'm just going to let her know. Just go to my Facebook page. That's the thing, if I'd done a Zoom session. Um, we would have had a lot of confusion. <laughs> we have a lot of confusion when there's only 20 of us. <laughs> Oh, okay, Mel, that's all right. You can come back later. I'm planning on this will be about two hours. It's usually about what we draw for. Um, but you can, yeah, leave. Don't worry. This is going to be recorded. So um, we're going to um, – I'll, I'll, it'll just remain on my Facebook page. So that's sort of how Facebook usually works. All right. So I'm now going to spin this so you won't see me anymore. Um and put it onto my little stand thing and see how we go. Um, Evelyn, why are you not getting in? Hold on. Evelyn's struggle, struggling to see it. Um, go to the event, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, okay, we'll figure it out. If... um. Anyone can help Evelyn. She's in the chat. If anyone is in the chat and knows how she can um, see me, I've told her to go to the Facebook group and also go to the event. So we'll see. All right. This is our um, reference image and line art that um, if you were drawing along with me, you could download. So, um, and it's a photo from Debbie Ann Photography. So I, I like to try and make sure I either use my own photos or use a copyright free photos. So Debbie posts hers on, um, there's a Facebook page called uh, Free Reference Photos for, for Artists. And it's an awesome page and you get some great photographers who will share their work for us to use. Hold on, just let me double-check. I'll just sound. All right, cool. So sound is working now? All right. Okay, so, yeah, so when you're doing any sort of drawings, it's fine if for practice to, to do any photo, but um, if you're planning on sort of putting it on social media or um, wanting to sell it or anything, of course, make sure you're using copyright-free. Okay, so... Pixabay.com is another really good site that gives us copyright-free photos. Or, of course, um, use your own photos always best, but it, sometimes that's a bit hard. Okay, so if you're drawing along with me, you should have um, uh, the outline already on here. Okay, ready to go. I'm just going to... Okay, so first thing I do 
I always like to get the eye done first and then work on the fur because the fur is really boring. <laughs> and I like doing eyes. So the first thing I do is um, I like to get the dark sin of the pupil and keep a note on where the light is, okay? Because with pastel, if we end up putting really dark down along here, it's hard um, to bring the light back in. We can do it with a pastel stick, but when we're just using pencils, it's um, better to sort of make sure you get those lights in. So first thing I usually do is I get um, my white, and I'm just gonna mark in where I see some of these lighter areas. That line there is this shadow here. So it's sort of just up in here, there's a bit of a light area. And then down the bottom, sort of through here, there's some lights. Again, sort of just up around here as well. Okay, so there's, there are my lights, so I know I won't go over those too much with my darks. There's actually a little bit of light along here as well. Now, if you were just doing this in a graphite pencil, you do sort of, um, you wouldn't put your lights in, of course, because uh, you'd be working on white paper, but you would just use your pencil and sort of get your darks. Just keep an eye on your values if you're using graphite. Okay. Now, with the eye, right, um, same, same thing. So if I was to... Um, say just put black down, I'll do it, um, I'll do it up here, if you can see up here. So say if I was just to put black down here and then try and come back over it with my blues, the black underneath sort of mixes in with them so you're not getting those nice bright true colours. Okay, so... Rather than just colour this whole pupil in black first, I'm going to get some blues in. Okay, so I want to make sure you can see my reference image. Yep, okay. So you can see there's a line through here, which is the horizon line. So I'm just going to get some blue in there. I, I use a light pressure as well. Okay, all the time. And I just build my layers up. Okay, so this blue I picked isn't that brilliant, isn't that great. It's a bit um, of a purple blue. Um, if you're not using exactly the same colours as me, you could change it to more of a, a sky blue if you wanted. Um, and then I'm putting some of this lighter blue over the top. It's a bit lighter sort of over in this corner here. And there's also a bit of dark, this darker blue around the bottom. Pupils very rarely are um, just black. Ooh, pencil's a bit funny shape. All right, now I'm going to come in with my black. So it's quite dark along that edge. And I, I think that sort of also helps to make a um, realistic looking sort of portrait and an eye is to make sure you don't just do one colour, like there's always other colours in it. So I'm going to blend a little bit of black in with this and then bring my blue back in and I just sort of keep going until I fill the tooth of my paper up and I'm sort of happy with, with the colour I'm seeing there. Like I said, it, it's that blue I've got isn't really the greatest blue. It would have been better, more of a sky blue. But that's all right. I wouldn't go with it. No one knows other than all of you guys because you can see the reference image. <laughs> but normally um, people don't see the reference image of you, so you can change colours if you want. Okay. I'm just sort of... Got a little bit of black around the edge, so I won't bring that all the way. Okay, and then up the top here, there's kind of, it's quite blue all just there. Um, black around this edge up here. 
And it sort of blends in to this floaty black. I'll bring this darker one back in. It's even like you probably don't have to put a bit, although it's probably actually there's quite often shadow lines from the lashes, which I think that little stroke there could be from. Okay, so you see how just by using a light touch, I've just managed to build that up. And there's no paper sort of showing through now. Um, so this probably could be a bit bluer, maybe. Not quite as light as I've got it. Okay, I think I'm sort of happy with that for now. Just let me double check if there was any questions. Um, Alright, cool. I don't think I've missed anything. Okay, so now I'm going to sort of start working out. And I picked, put my blues and black down. I picked these colours, but the more I'm looking at it now, it's definitely got sort of some orange in it through here. Um, so up to you. If you've only got the colours I, I recommended, then that's fine. That's all we need. But if you've got others, you could throw a bit of orange in there, um, even a little bit of um, yellows, like if you want a bit brighter. So again, I'm just going to, I think I'll use this as the 685. And I'm just going to block this in now, all around the iris. Okay, and I always like to do my strokes all heading towards the um, the pupil. And again, I'm not using a lot of pressure. Now up that top bit, I might put a little bit of this color in, but it's that's actually the shadow line along here. So it does have a bit of the colour behind it, but we're going to come in with a, um, some browns sort of to darken that up. Okay, and I might bring this one in, which was the 680. A bit more around sort of this area. I've got this big thing of black there, which isn't great, but we should be able to eventually cover that up. start looking at um, darks and lights and like I said if you had some orange you could bring some orange sort of in now as well into spots this is not sharpened very well at all <laughs> you can see I've done that with um, a knife so it's a bit I did it in a rush obviously so you could sort of start putting bits of orange in if you wanted here and there and just I just slowly sort of start building this up where I see colors um, brown so we've got this 640 is like a it's a dark sort of kaput mortem so there's a bit of that sort of in these areas around the edge edge through here. Okay, what other brown did we have? We've got this pit pastel, it's a really dark brown, so we can get that in as well. 
I'm just sort of looking at the edges at the moment where it's really dark. And we can start bringing it up. You can see it's quite in shadow through here and along here. So you could either find some other browns or use this brown really lightly on here and then come back over it with some of the colour we already were using. Oh, maybe this one, so okay, I'll go with this 680. I'll just keep building that up. It's quite dark up here actually. Which one was I using? <laughs> Forgetting you. I usually switch between pencils pretty regularly. Or like I said, if you've got a um, light brown there, you could use that. I'm just trying to stick with the few colours I actually put in. I always try and <clears throat> stick with, <coughs> sorry, I always try and stick with more limited palette only because um, I'm sort of teaching quite a few beginners that don't have a lot of, of um, supplies just yet. So I try and keep it to a fairly minimal amount. Okay, now we've got some um, darker lines coming up. So again, I will... Come back to this 640 and start putting in some darker lines. And actually, this is in a fair bit of shadow all along here, so. I think it needs to go a bit darker in those shadow areas. I'm just going to blend these lines back in now. So I'll bring this dark brown back in again. So you can see how many sort of colours, like I said, go into this. It's not just a flat sort of drawing. We're just slowly, constantly building these up. And I would normally uh, be using quite a few others, other colours in it as well. It's quite a sharp line actually through here, so I'm going to try and get that in as a sharp line. Okay, what else do we need to do? We can keep adding some more brown down here. I'm just looking at as it comes around the edge of the pupil. Sometimes that can be quite dark as well. I'm just adding a bit of this um, dark brown right around the edge and I'll blend it in a bit. Just so that I can't see any paper mark there. All right, now it was looks a bit lighter. We'll bring in some of our cream now. I'm 
My eye looks a bit flat there. So we're going to bring in some of our lighter colours. So this is um, 692. Again, a light touch. Jeez, Wendy, I don't know if you can hear. There's some cracking noises and stuff that goes on over here. But that's my garage door. <laughs> now it's quite a bit lighter, just along that line there. It's the line where it comes through here. It's somewhere along there. It's a bit lighter. Get some more dark happening in here again. Just a wee bit darker. I think I need to bring some orange in. Definitely get some orange down in here. This is pencil is shocking to try and work with the way the point is on it. Just need to brighten this up a little bit. Um, what else do we have? I can see a bit of blue actually up in here as well. So. Put a little bit of that in there. We'll just fix our um, reflection off a little bit. And I think I think I need to bring some orange down here a bit. I've got it a bit funny. It's a bit of a funny shape. We need to um, come down a bit lower here, I think. what else do we see so you can tell I'm just constantly flicking my eyes back and forth between the reference image and um, my drawing and trying to get in any marks I'm seeing here I could bring some more of the lighter colour in. Bit of orange there, a bit more brown out this way. Definitely don't think I'll pick the colours that great for this one. Usually I'm fairly close. <laughs> But I feel like I'm missing a few colours here. Mm, it's not too bad. That's the thing I really love about pastel, is you can um, keep adding the colours and build it up to um, what you're sort of after. Um, so it's kind of like um, mixing paint but on your, on your actual um, painting rather than mixing it before the painting. 
I'm offering this, um, I've got this really pale pink here. I might just bring that in along this edge. And then I also want to bring my black in a little bit and really just get some of this darker in here. In this corner here is quite dark as well. A little bit of black in there. And just above there. I like to sort of frame the eye a bit as well, just so I can start to see what it looks like. Actually, I'm going to get some of this pink up in here. All right, um, let me see. Still feel this needs to be darker off here. I can see the blue in it, but I still don't think it's dark enough. It should be, normally the top of the eye is always really quite dark and it's just the shadow from the brow. Maybe I'll put a bit of that darker blue in it rather than the light blue. That might work. It is still so windy here. All right, I'll dull that down a little bit. And there's a few little light. Whoop light bits through here right um this here i'm not sure about actually where's my light i think it's a shadow as well from the um, from these lashes, but we'll see how it looks at the end. I might end up getting rid of it. Um, I think we've got enough sort of dark marks in it. Just want to darken that up a little bit. So you can see how I can muck around with these for hours and hours and hours. I'm trying to sort of push myself through a bit quicker. Um, that may be a little bit darker in there. Um, orange again. I'm going to stop and just have a little quick check and make sure there aren't any questions I should be answering. Okay, I'll just go and check over here. Okay, yeah, so I can't see any questions, so I will keep going. What is the time, guys? Oh, it's only half past seven. Okay, cool. I can have a sip of my drink then. All right. Can you ever erase bits of the darker colours? All right, Julie, can I ever erase bits of the darker colours if I go wrong? So you could see I did have black there. And by going over it, it has kind of hidden it. But you could, um, I always, if, you know, a kneadable eraser like this. These are these ones. They're only like $3. Get a Faber-Castell one that I find they're the best. They're nice and soft. And um, you could pull out a little bit. It can pull out a little bit. So what it would do, 
would bring the tooth of the paper back a little bit and then you can bring the pastel back over the top. Okay, so that is very forgiving. I always liken pastel to oils in that you can forgive, um, like make some mistakes and and um, sort of rework it. Your biggest thing is not filling the tooth of your paper, of your pastel paper. Um, that's why I work lightly in light layers and, um, and I love pastel mat because I find it takes a lot of layers. It, it sort of um, manages to let me build up really easy. Um, I think I can take about um, two, like about eight layers. Hold on. Now it's just coming. That's better. All right, let's bring this back. Okay, let's go. What have we got next? We're going to start coming out of the eye a bit before I then, once I get out sort of around here, I then sort of will do a bit of a block in before I start the fur. Okay, so again, I've got my lights here. I can see some of this 640. Um, it's like a reddy brown. So I'm going to sort of start putting some of that in around. And right out here, it's really dark brown actually out here. I might even come back to my um, pit pastel, which was my darker brown, and sort of start blocking that in a bit. I think that line there we've got is the white area of the fur. So the actual eye sort of lids and that kind of only just come out to about here. And again down through here. Again, I think that area there is sort of just this area through here. Sometimes when I do line art, I lose track of what lines I am. Um, what lines I've put down so it makes it very difficult for everyone else trying to follow along with me. Yeah, I want to put some of that red into here as well. Oh, this is quite awkward. I'm really now I've moved it up. I'm trying to work with my head around the phone that's kind of right in front of the camera. Oh, in front of the drawing. That's all right. Because I'm using light layers, like I'm not blocking this too hard, I can change colours as I'm going. So if I think, oh no, that's not quite right, I can um, like build up others. So this is like my favourite colour. Um, it is 642 and it's called Kaput Morton Violet Light. I just find it's a really good colour for around eyes and um, mouths, all those sort of areas. So I've usually got that in there somewhere. I'm going to have to go a lot darker there. here and I'm going to bring in my flesh colour at 681 and sort of blend it with this a little bit in some spots. It's really white just there. But then it comes down. This needs to be quite a bit darker all through here. Okay. 
I think I need to bring my dark brown back in now and get some of this area a lot darker than what I've got it. Okay. So it comes across here. I think I also need some black in here too. This is more shadow through here. So I like to, you can see I'm sort of going back over in some areas where I've put the pink and that, but you've still got it as an undertone. So that's why I sort of slowly build these colours up and then they'll show through. Like sometimes we've done animals and put like when we block in with pastel sticks and really um do some bright colors like you know really bright purples and things like that and once you've done all the fur you don't really see those bright colors that much but it gives it a really nice sort of undertone to it I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way um, I might even bring in, I do have a grey here, I think we need some grey in here. And, alright. Now this is nowhere near dark enough, let's go back to our dark brown, try and segment these up a bit. So you can see, like, I started off with those big white areas just to, to make sure I didn't lose them. But um, now I'm starting to refine it more. I'm just going to use my black here. I can bring my white back in and because we sort of haven't put a lot of dark colour under there, you can see I can just, if I put a bit more pressure, so it's all about adjusting your pressure as well actually. So I can start to, you know, add more lighter areas if I want sort of as I'm going or usually I come back in towards the end and look at where it needs to be lighter. It needs to be black there. And then sometimes if the tooth has filled and I feel like I'm not, um, I'm not getting it as dark as I want or as light as I want, I can then come in with my pastel sticks and um, add some light and dark so that again I usually wait till right at the end to do that sort of stuff okay so now this area here again this is all sort of broken up as well it's not a big white blob that I've got there so we'll start bringing in some marks into that as well Just tone that down a little bit. I still think I need more dark in there. And we want this to look a bit sort of rounded. So we want sort of dark on this side. 
dark on this side and a bit lighter in the middle so it looks like it's rounded around. Bring some dark in here again. I might even bring that just there looks like it's got a it's reflected light off of that eye so it's probably more of these sort of colors coming in here or even a bit of orange I'll go back to that one and darken it a bit through here Alright, I think I need black. I think I need to get this a bit darker up here and in here. You can see it's a lot of, um, it takes a lot of time, but the whole thing with drawing is it's supposed to be a hobby and relaxing and, you know, it's not a rush. And the minute you're trying to do anything in realism, You've got to take your time because it's all about the different colours and just the fine details. Okay, so I'm going to dull that down a bit, but I can see it is really white just there. So I'll bring my white in and there's like, there's like some dots in here, isn't there? And then I might use my pink rather than white to bring in some more little marks through here. Again, I think this, I might put a bit of black there to go a bit darker. Um, I'm just sort of now looking at anywhere that needs any little marks. See, up here is really sort of, I might get more of the brown in and then come back in so it comes right up. That should be white actually up in there. Um, Alright, let's get my white and I'll just brighten up here a little bit more. But again, we can come back to that afterwards. And I wanted to darken just around here a bit. Okay. All right, so next step. Put that there. Oh, I'm just looking at if I need to darken some areas. Okay, no, that will do. Okay, just let me go and check comments again. Um, yeah, Regina, you can rewatch definitely. Um, this will be available on my Facebook page. Um, I'll just pin it to the top. And Michelle, you're trying something new with graphite and charcoal. So what you need to do is just really focus on your values, okay? So when you're not using the colour, um, just really concentrate on... Um, just using yeah, dark and light and get your values right. Compare things. So you could compare, you know, with is this as dark as the pupil there? 
or say what is this as light as up here, which it's not sort of thing. You just sort of keep an eye on what, what is and what isn't. Okay, so next step. So once I've sort of done the eye, I start to sort of normally um, it depends on the size of the drawing. So if it's only small, um, I haven't got it here. If it's only small, I would bring out um, the fur just in pencil. Hold on, just let me have a sip of wine. <laughs> but when it's a bit bigger, I like to block in underneath the fur with pastel sticks just to get a bit of colour happening. And it's just a bit quicker. So um, I can see some light areas sort of around the eye. So I'm just going to put a bit of stick here. Down here. This is where I was saying... Um, that's actually getting quite dark over there, where I was saying um, that I um, can sometimes like put bright colours underneath. Um, this is sort of light here. And normally I, if I was doing a background, I'd always do the background sort of um, first. I work furthest away and come forward. I'm going to put a bit of this one in down here. This one sort of goes quite the way around. These colours probably aren't exactly the same as the um, hair, but it's just pretty much just to get some coverage down. It's just a lot quicker, I find, than... Um, than having to cover a large area just in pencil. Gee, this is very dark. Might even use the cream sort of all the way around here. Okay. And then what I like to use as well this is pretty dirty. Hold on. <laughs> yep, I should have got a clean sponge tool. But on um, on pastel mat, if you use your finger to blend, it doesn't blend very well. Um, so I like to use one of these sponge tools. Okay, so they're a pan pastel sponge tool. I'm just going to slowly sort of push the colour into the paper and try and be very careful around the eye a bit. And this sort of, it blends it, but it also um, pushes it into the paper. But if you're using, say, Colour Fix or a sanded paper like Colour Fix, I find the sponge tool doesn't work as well. You're better off probably to use your finger on those papers. Let's get a bit of the dark blended in. Okay, so you can see that, yep. So, yeah, so essentially I get that. So it's just an undertone of what I can sort of see in the fur. Um, like I said, the colours probably aren't exactly right, but a lot of times this gets covered over by building the fur up. I'm just going to get my pencil sorted out again. Hold on. Okay. Now, the main thing with fur is to keep an eye on direction and length. 
So as I come out, I'm going to start working out from the eye. I might even, I've got a bit of glassine paper here just to rest my hand on so I don't go shoving my hand all through it. So I'm just sort of keeping an eye and just lightly starting to figure out where this fur direction is going. So up around the top here, sort of comes around. Fur changes, especially around the eyes and noses, it changes direction a lot. So I'm just sort of trying to map it out a bit with this dark brown. I don't want to put this really dark brown through like the lighter areas. I'm just going to sort of build up around here. Um, this probably has a bit of black in as well. But we'll just go with this for now. Sort of starts to come up. Okay, now I'm going to bring, let's see, I think I want to bring some of this is the 280. Actually, what I can see is a bit of pink in here, so I'm just going to get a bit of this pink blocked in down here. Okay, now I can come back to my uh, 680, is it 680? 780? I always lose track and I, um, as you can see, the gold wears off and then it's really hard to see the numbers. A good idea, I don't have any here with it on. Some of them I've taped the number to it, which I need to do with all of them. Okay, so I'm going to bring some of this in. We need some shadow marks in the light to make them stand out so you can still see strokes. So I might even bring some of the grey in there as well. Don't want a lot, just a few. Just so we can see where that direction's going. And then down here. Kind of is some dark. It's gone going in a few different directions. There's a few little darker ones up through there. And then I can bring my cream in wherever I've put it. Oh, there it is. That's why I couldn't find it. I've got it on a pencil extender. <laughs> So I'll bring some of the cream in on top. Now fur takes a long time to build up. So I always find it's just a matter of doing lots of layers until I get it to where I'm sort of happy. And I always think it's not working every time. And then all of a sudden, once I've sort of got the layers in, it starts to come together. All right, so we'll keep working up here a bit. I'm going to get some more of this greys in. So it's quite in shadow over this side in that cream. A lot of grey happening. I 
He's got really short fur through here. Might even go to a brown again. Don't know what's going on there. It could be sometimes if it looks really short like that, it could be coming towards us. Some darks in here as well. Again, just keeping an eye on direction so it, my eyes are constantly flicking back and forth. I don't want to get too dark in here because we still need it to stay that lighter colour. Not ruining some of this one. up here, even a bit of pink, come into this area, it goes really dark through this area out the back here, but you can see I'm just constantly keeping an eye on these, um, the first stroke sort of length direction where they are, because I can change the colour of the strokes and lighten areas and darken areas. It's the, the main thing is getting them in the right direction and the length. Um, I know a lot of people, especially it, this one doesn't change much in, in length, but say on a tiger or a dog's nose or something like that, they've got quite long fur, but then as it comes down into the nose, it's really, really short. And if you don't change that stroke length to really short, then you're going to have a very um, furry looking tiger. Some dark in there. We need to get more dark in through here. It comes all the way along through here, quite dark. So I suppose I kind of get a lot of my darks in first and then come back in over the top with the lighter ones. I suppose that's how I kind of work. So I'm sort of, with the darks, you're looking more at the, the shadows, I suppose, that the lighter ones have caused. Get a few more greys up in here. And this is really dark under here. And we come back into the lighter ones as well. Probably need some blacks in there. All right, let's bring some more light over the top. All right, I'm trying to figure out colours. I go back and forth all the time. 
Sorry if you're following along with me. I know it, it can be a bit, bit hard because I'm always sort of swapping around. This is much darker in there, I think. And it starts to come light up the top here. And I also stagger my hand around as well so they're not all like in the uniform line. Okay, I'm going to bring some light ones back over the top. shorter through here and then some light ones up here but then they start to go dark quite a bit darker through here so I think I need to bring in I might even bring my black in a little bit and see how that goes darkening it up Again, I'm not putting much pressure down. Yeah, sort of in this area here, it's kind of in the shadow a bit. We want to get a bit darker. when you're doing your fur as well another thing if you find um if you find it's looking too soft and fluffy sort of thing and you don't want it to then that's just more a matter of you need some more contrast so you either have just too much light or too much dark so you just need to throw a few darks in between sort of the lighter fur um, this through here needs to be a bit darker. So I use this one. It's almost really dark up here, I think. But you can see with this pastel mat how much I can keep building up my layers. And then um, another thing I like to do is I'll then, once I've got like plenty of layers down, 
I can then come in with my finger and blend them. Okay, so I can just lightly blend them. And I go in the direction of the fur. And then I can build up more layers. So I can just keep going. And what that does, it sort of pushes it into the paper so I can still build more layers. But it also um, uh, helps to look like it's an underlayer sort of thing, if you know what I mean. It looks like there's more depth to it because I can come back over the top. But um, again, pastel mat's the only one you can really do that on because I find others... I probably should have got a light grey actually, but I don't. Um, maybe my light blue, sorry. Other papers tend to blur, like if I did that, if I put my finger over the top of, um, say if I was using colour fix or a sanded paper, it would um, just wipe all of the first strokes off that I would just spent the last, you know, half hour putting on. And then you'd be really disappointed. Whereas the pastel mat, you can just be really light with it and it just um, pushes it into the paper a little bit, but you can still see them. Some more light through again. And then as I sort of get to a point that it's starting to build up and fill the paper, I then just put a bit more pressure on. Oh, yeah, you just sort of adjust the pressure that I'm doing with my pencil quite a bit. Um, let's see, let's start going out here a little bit. Get some more browns happening. Again, just keep an eye on that direction. I might just check again if there's any questions. Now you can see how I do fur, which I know it can be really sort of tedious. But it's sort of, I don't know, it's how I've taught myself to do fur and it eventually looks nice and soft. I know some other artists seem to be able to do it a lot quicker, but yeah, I just, I don't know, I can't do it. This is how I, I have to do it. I find um, black dogs or white dogs actually are quicker, or black or white animals, because you sort of tend to, um, you can just kind of put in, say, a white animal just do that blocking in, in the different greys and just come through with a white pencil and sort of add um, sort of the white highlights. You don't need that much. Half the time I think it's because I don't, I haven't got exactly the right colour, so I'm sort of, I chop and change a lot trying to build that colour up. See, that needs more dark in it to try and separate the fur a little bit more. I 
Okay, I'm gonna read the comments. Okay, I think, I don't think there's any questions, so that's good. I'll have another sip of wine. <laughs> I can see on the TV, on the screen, that my colours are a bit off. Actually, you know what it probably needs is a bit of orange. Well, maybe I just need more of this sort of colour through here. But then, like I was saying earlier, if um, you're doing a a drawing yourself, unless, unless it's a uh, pet portrait, that it is someone's actual animal and they know the colours exactly. <laughs> if it's just something um, you're doing yourself or, or you're using a reference photo um, like this, no one's going to know if the colours aren't exactly the same. But if you're doing yeah, a pet portrait for someone, Usually you've got to really try and stick to the right colours. Well, I might come down here a little bit more. And also I'm limiting myself here with um, the colours of what I'm using. I do have the whole set of um, Stabilo Carbothellos, which are kind of my favourite pastel pencil. These, they're the ones I'm using now. And um, yeah, so if you've got the whole set, of course you can just use whatever colours you want. I'll even bring some pink up in the here. A few really light strokes. Even a few white ones, maybe. Oh, hi. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed um, watching this and hopefully you've learnt something. <laughs> um, yeah, so every, um, every month in my online membership, which the doors are open now, and um, every month we do a draw-along session like this. It goes for about two hours. Um, but it's a Zoom session, like I was saying earlier, and it's a lot of fun. And we just we have a different theme every month. Um, so during like throughout the month, you get there's recorded tutorials go up in the membership that I've pre-recorded, and um, the workbook and all the rest of it with it. And we have a theme. So this month we're looking at backgrounds. Um, the other month we did insects. Uh, next month we're doing Australian animals. And we do pastel mainly, but also charcoal and graphite. So, yeah. 
So I will put the link below once I finish for anyone who is interested in joining the membership. It's, um, it's a great group and yeah, you definitely learn a lot. And um, yeah, there's a lot of community involvement. Like we do a lot of things. Um, so it's not just the, the tutorials. You, we do art chats, we do member meetups. If you're local to me, we do a bit of sketching and stuff. Go for coffee, things like that. Lots of fun stuff. And um, I try to keep you motivated. <laughs> That wasn't really the right colour in there. There's hairs all over the place through this area. Actually, what I might do is put a bit of the cream in and then come back over it with this colour. into here. And I will be doing also, I just haven't got it organized yet, but I will also be doing another coaching week in September probably towards the end of September because I'm going to the Pastel Expo, which um, starts on, starts the 31st of uh, August and runs till the 4th of um, September. So I'm gonna be learning lots there and sharing it with the, my members. So the coaching week will be a bit later, later on in September, I think. But that's another thing. If you're not sure if you like pastel, then that's something else you could maybe join. But I'm gonna leave the doors to my membership open for a little while now. Normally I close them, but they're going to stay open so you can join um, for the next sort of few months, anytime. Just like I said, I'll put the link in. Uh, if you've got any questions, you can ask me, of course. And then I also have... Um, yeah, so I've got my subscription box as well. The next one of those is coming out in September. So if you need to, you'll see on my page somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> I've got a link to join the wait list for that. I've got 20 extra boxes this time round. So, um, uh, yeah, it'll just be the first 20 to pay for them. When I, I release it, they'll be the ones that get them. Other than, of course, the there's 30, 30 existing subscribers. Theirs are already safely locked in. So we did a koala last subscription box. Um, this next one is a tiger. And the best thing for me about the subscription boxes is we um, raise funds. So $5 from every box goes towards um, the a charity of the animal we're drawing. So we did the koala last time. And um, we managed to raise $150 
And that went to the Koala Foundation at Australia Zoo. And this one we're going to be donating to um, a tiger charity. So, yeah, it's pretty good. That's sort of been my goal. I just, I've always loved wildlife and animals. And one of my biggest goals was to try and be able to support some animal charities through through the, the art. And, um, yeah, this the whole subscription box is sort of coming along really well. And um, so the more subscribers I get, the more we can donate. So, But, yeah, again, if you want to know more about any of this stuff I'm talking about <laughs> while I'm drawing, just um, you can pop a question in the chat here and I'll get back to you later with all the links or... Um, you can go and try and find the links on my pages somewhere. They're usually all over the place. Or you could go to my website, which is kerrydixonart.com. Um, also, if you haven't already joined my free Facebook group, make sure you do that as well because we do some... Um, draw along stuff in there we, we have a monthly challenge it's an Aesop fable challenge actually maybe I should bring that in hold on um, so I give everyone a sentence at the start of the month and they've come up with a drawing to represent the sentence whether it's one part of it or the whole sentence and um, then the winner is the gets the banner. I designed the banner up for them of the group. So yeah, it's always a lot of fun for that as well. And we'll try and get some entries in. I always try to get something done. I don't enter it, but um, I try and do a live showing what I would do for that sentence, but. I've been busy lately, so I haven't done this one uh, for this month, but I'll get there hopefully. All right, so as you can see, this is sort of how we just, you can see it takes me forever. <laughs> but um, I'm just sort of constantly looking back and forth, trying to figure out colours and which way the fur is going. All right, I think I'm going to pretty much call this a day because it's just the same sort of same thing what I'm doing here. So I just build it up and then I can, again, rub over areas and build up some more. And like I said earlier, the main thing with the... Uh, is just really keep an eye on direction and length. Okay, so looking at your reference image is sort of the biggest thing. I'm constantly flicking my eyes back and forth between um, my drawing and the reference. All right, I'm going to flip this camera back around to me and um, then just see if anyone's got any other questions. <laughs> I see a bit exhausting. <laughs> All right. Let me just take it whoop, off of here. Okay, there we go. I'm back. <laughs> what is the time? Hub us eight. All right, we didn't quite get to two hours, but you can um, see I. it's very tedious, the whole fur thing. So um, I might just do a little zoom up. I'll flip it back around. 
Let's see if you can't see that a bit better. So yeah, it's, it is definitely can be exhausting, that's for sure. So you can see, I don't know, you can see all the layers in the fur. So, all right, any questions? I'm just here looking at the screen. Oh, Janet, yes, the expo is going to be amazing. I can't wait. Oh, it's that Caloundra. Oh, Chloe, yeah, with the, um, I forgot to mention the Let's Draw, thank you. Uh, yeah, the membership is open and with the membership, it's called the Creative Barn Membership. It's my pricing's in US dollars because it's sort of, uh, I have members from all over the world. So it's $29 US a month and then $290 a year. So you get two months uh, free if you join for the year. Um, now that has all, there's over 100 tutorials all in there that gets added to every month and it's a whole community. Um, we do the meetups, uh, we do Zoom sessions, uh, we play bingo. <laughs> there's um, all different things um, in there. There's game boards. You get little pins each time you you manage to. This is your first hatchling pin. Each time you get through a different stage, it's all really sort of set out to encourage you to keep moving forward. But if you prefer to work by yourself um, and you're not really into the whole community side of it, then I do offer, it's the first three stages of the membership. So there's over 80 tutorials and they get added to each month as well. Um, you can just draw, uh, join that. That's the Let's Draw bundle and that's um, $17 US a month or you get an extra discount on that one. If you join for the year, it's only 150 okay? But it depends how you work. So that that's available for anyone who yeah doesn't really need the whole community side of it or the interactive live zooms or um you know I, i'm still um talk to you if you're in like the let's draw bundle um through the free facebook group and like, i'm always here if you have any questions of course but um yeah we, you it's more motivational in the actual main membership. So, but it depends how you, you like to work. So, um, Diane, the pastel expo sounds fun. We get free samples. Yes, I will. They're, um, my ticket included free samples. <laughs> All right. I'm just trying to scan through and see, um, Trudy, how do you keep the pencils sharp and clean? Um, my pencils are never very clean, but you can just wipe um, wipe them on a paper towel. But to sh the sharpening, that's something we've all been through, about a million sharpeners. Um, what I'm using right at this moment is just a little Stabilo Carbothello sharpener, a little disposable. They're kind of disposable. They're like $2.50 and... Um, you know, once they go blunt, it's you may as well just get another one, I suppose. I think the blades are a bit hard to find. I'm not sure. I haven't tried to find blades. But um, that, there's a little, I don't know where they are, the little red general sharpeners are really good as well. And then um, this one is a swordfish crank handle sharpener. They're really good as well. Um, or just a good old knife and sanding block. Um, with the Stabilos are a really soft pastel pencil, so they do break easy. So sometimes the sharpeners just, you feel like you're sharpening and you're grinding your pencil down and it just keeps breaking. So if something like that is happening, that's when I bring the knife and um, sanding block out. Uh, I, you have more control over the breaking, I feel, with the knife. So, um, yeah, so, all right, hold on, I'm just going to read that. Oh, thank you, Sue. You're definitely worth the money. It's so much fun, our membership, it really is. Um, so, yeah, that was great. I have to go now. Thanks, Jeanette. Sandpaper and a blade, yeah, Helene, that's... 
sort of my go-to a bit as well. So um, it's all right. I'm getting <laughs> people are sending me pictures. Diane's sending me photos of their work. That's cool. I'll go through and have a look. So, yeah, definitely if you want to message me um, or put in the chat or put in the free Facebook group um, what you got you got done today, that's what normally in our Zoom session, our draw-along, we all hold it up at the end. But, of course, um, with Facebook we can't do that. So um, oh, thanks, Donna. All right, I think I've answered stuff. I'm just scrolling back through. Are you drawing? Well, no, that wasn't to me. <laughs> Are you drawing late watching? All right. Um, I think I've answered everything. So, But like I said, um, if you've got any other questions, just pop them in the comments and I will put up the links to my membership and stuff. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. Oh, look at all my, my members telling everyone how good it is. It is. Just take it for, from them. It is a great membership. So anyway, but like I said, um, I will be um, doing Coaching Week again end of September. But, um, yeah, if you want to join me before that, definitely follow the links that I'll put in and hopefully I'll see you in, in the membership or even the Let's Draw bundle. Um, so, all right, guys, thanks for joining me. And... Um, I will talk to most of you very shortly. Those in the membership, we have a art chat on Sunday, but I'll remind you all in the in the group. Oh, Libby. Oh, that's good you're here, Libby, and you entered too into the Maryborough exhibition. That is amazing. And you better be at the opening night on the 12th of August. <laughs> if anyone lives close, come to the opening night. It'll be a good night. All right, guys, thank you. I'll um, see you all later. Bye.